but to show you guys real quick how to install a brass uh, barrel. If you buy a brass bowl from us, you'll get the barrel with the receiver as the barrel portion, and you'll get a muzzle with the hardware needed to install it. Optionally, you can also get a RAM core or RAM base with it. This is a bra brass RAM core to be installed in a modified RAM base. This has been bored out for 17 30 seconds RAM core because the default RAM core is one half inch, so it needs a bigger hole, but it installs the same way. It's just a press fit or a push fit. You like to apply some glue on the inside of the RAM before pressing it in to make sure the air seal is great. There's no leaking air out of this RAM. It is a nice press fit. The default RAM gets a similar air seal, but when you order a RAM, a brass barrel from us, you don't necessarily have to get a brass RAM. However, we highly recommend it. You can still use a default RAM in it. However, it does leak a little bit if the RAM is off center. So personally, I recommend the brass RAM for a much better air seal. There's like no leaking in that at all. So we get a much more consistent performance. However, if you're, if you're okay with some variants, you can just get the brass barrel. But to install it in both the Caliber and Talonclaw platforms, you simply remove your old nozzle. That's the nozzle brake. It's just a mostly cosmetic. Take off the original nozzle. Here's the muzzle for the aluminum barrel. So we'll just unscrew the nuts in the front. That just slides right off. There's the old muzzle. And then we can install the new muzzle. Quick note though, depending on your, your size of your brass and your muzzle, you may want to install things as follows. If your upper receiver has a large enough hole, you can slide the 916 brass receiver in from the back. So you can install your barrel from the back of your magwell, which makes it easier because this tight fit in the brass muzzle will have a push fit in 17 30 seconds brass, but it will not allow the 916 receiver to go through. So if you do not, if you cannot push the 916 receiver through the magwell, you have to remember to install the barrel with the muzzle at the same time. If you do have the modified upper mount well, which is available on our site and on our Etsy, you can simply install the muzzle as you would normally build a caliber and talon claw and slide in the barrel from the back. So unless you got your prints from us or you printed your own specific modified mount well with a wider hole, you will have to install it as follows. Put the barrel on the muzzle, slide the whole assembly in, the front of your caliber or talon claw. Line up the thread rod so you get it through the holes in the muzzle. Line up all the little holes, there you go. And then just reinstall your hex nuts to hold on the muzzle. And what we've done is we've modified the old muzzle as well. So it still has the screw port for the 440 screw to attach the trench. So you can keep your nuts tight so it's a direct replacement for the newer muzzle for the aluminum barrel. So tighten your hex nuts down. After it's nice and tight and you lack the tension on it, the stiffness of your front, you can replace the trench on the talon claw and caliber. And this helps to keep the nuts from loosening up over time, thanks to Captain Slug. So here it is, we uh, put on our trench piece, we can replace the muzzle because we kept the same trench piece. And that just gives us an orange tip. Now, if you want, you can get a scar or a suppressor or another muzzle piece. So you have orange on the very tip. Some places require you to have that in play. My local group is less strict about that. But if you're also worried about potentially denting the brass or damaging it by hitting it on something, you can get a sleeve that'll fit over it. We have on our site, uh, just an aluminum tube 
it's kind of like a default barrel, but it fits over the brass that slides on. Um, it helps protect your barrel. So if you accidentally hit it against something, you won't dent the brass. It'll just hit the aluminum and scratch it up rather than scratching up your pretty brass barrel. When you install the brass, you'll have a small gap between the lip for the original aluminum barrel and the magwell and the brass barrel. That's just so the brass barrel can float a little bit and give you a little bit more tolerance. If, you're, if it's not perfectly straight, it could actually fit right into the place you want. When you find that sweet spot, you can actually wrap it in tape and glue it in if you like, or you can keep it floating there for better um, flexibility in your positioning and your precision and getting everything aligned. Um, but it should sit about a 16th of a way from the barrel, so that way it's not clamped against the magwell and causing it to, to bind and not move when the ram comes forward. So I like to have it spaced a little bit behind me, about a 16th of an inch behind the lip in the magwell. And then you can just use a regular 1032 screw and nut to tighten down the clamp. You can actually use the original nut and screw in your old muzzle and just apply the clamping force to tighten that brass barrel down. So you just tighten the clamp and then I cannot, I can no longer pull that barrel out. Okay. So that is the brass barrel installed. Now we can go with a dog bone or a Vanguard ram. So it just mates inside of that barrel. Gives us an okay air seal. Be careful that while you're doing this, you don't bang up the end of your barrel because I've done that many times. <laughs> like only swinging the wall, they actually, oops, I forgot. Which is why I prefer not an 18 inch barrel, especially in brass. Do, do, do. So here we have the, Default ram with the O-ring notch on tip and the upgrade Vanguard. So the default ram does not have an O-ring notch on the tip. So you do not have the small O-rings that go into the barrel. However, back to barrels, uh, the default ram works with default barrel just fine. You can still reach upper 100 level performance, you know, 185 is off a of K25 without the O-ring notch, but you'll get, like I said, less consistent performance because of the air leaking around the dart and depending on how big your dart is, the air will leak more or less rapidly causing your shot. Some will go really powerful, some will drop short. And so you get more consistency from those O-rings on the upgraded RAM. So I'd recommend at least that upgrade. But here we have the machine RAM base, black seal with the Vanguard with double O-rings on the O-ring notch. Now, some people will say, oh, one O-ring or two O-rings or three O-rings is better. However, you really just use as many O-rings as you see fit. More O-rings typically create more friction and that can be a obvious downside to using more O-rings. I usually just use one because I find that if our rams remain to high enough quality and the barrels are consistent enough, one is just enough. However, the 527s do have less consistency in their inner diameters than the 495s or 509. So you may find that even with one O-ring, it may leak a little bit because the barrel 527s will have some variance in their inner diameters. So you may want to use two O-rings However, usually I find one is just enough, although I had somebody else build this one on and that two could be fun, so they did two. Full disclosure, that was not my idea. So, 18 inch brass barrel, upgraded lead ram core, machine parts, K25 spring, air seal test, pretty leaky. Stewart said it would work, I actually didn't test it. But there you go, fast reload, sacrifice of air seal. So it hits pretty hard. Okay, so bad and good example. It works with the fast reload, but use an air seal. Probably just because the whole thing is crooked, not lined up. I also didn't lubricate it. However, it is leaking. You can use Teflon tape, the white stuff you can wrap around pipes and threading that you use for air hoses and plumbing. You can wrap that around the base of the O-rings on the ram tip to widen them slightly. It's a temporary fix. You can also get wider O-rings if you'd like. However, then it's no longer cross compatible with the default aluminum barrels and you have to keep them straight. And if they're both black around the exact same size, it's pretty much possible to keep them straight. So good luck with that. So I'd recommend just using a brass ram, wrapping a little bit of Teflon tape underneath them or electrical tape if you want to cut it in half, but that's a lot of work. So just Teflon tape is easier. And that'll give you a good air seal on the brass so you no longer have to use a brass ram specifically. However, who knows how old this ram core is. I'm pretty sure we took my old one and just added the Vanguard in it and then put the old one back in. So this ram core is also like two years old. So there you go. 
or you can go with the brass ram core for an even better air seal. So that would just install in there as normal. It would slide in and you want a nice slide fit like I showed you earlier how the brass just slid into each other. Brass is picky. Because of the tight fit of the sections of brass into each other, it all needs to be very well aligned. So it has to be very parallel to each other so it fits right in each other. It may take some tinkering with the tightening of the nuts um, or loosening the priming bars, etc., in order to get that perfect fit. So what you want to do is adjust the fit, make sure it's aligned right. This caliber is about a year and a half old, if not more. The parts are a year and a half old and the alignment is off. I can tell the priming bars were off uh, just because the regular setup, the regular ram and the aluminum barrel, there's a lot more tolerance or a lot more uh, room for error. There's a lot more play that it allows, but the brass is a very picky monster indeed. So if you can tell, the brass looks like it is too high up and to the right. So what we can do is tighten the bottom left nuts. Before you button it up, you should always check the alignment. I'm gonna tighten these guys down, get that barrel sitting where I want it. Much better. Looks like it is still high on that side. I'm just going to tighten it on this side, just over to that side. Also make sure to use a shock pad, especially when using aluminum parts or you will smash things. New O-rings, nice and fresh. I want to use a, little, a generous amount of lube, silicone, PTFE, uh, anything silicone safe uh, that won't deter your O-rings. Stay away from petroleum-based substances and aerosols because they contain additives that will deteriorate your O-rings over time. And that is a brass barrel. That right there will give you a good 20 FPS at least boost, 20 to 50 FPS easy depending on your air seal. Um, what you want to do though is make sure your ram base is not leaking and your plunger is not leaking. So what we have here is a machine aluminum ram base. In this caliber in here, we have a black acetyl machine plunger. So they have a really good air seal. You can test that by uh, priming your blaster, plugging the end of the barrel with your finger and firing it. That's a pretty basic way to do it. You saw me earlier blowing down the barrel and testing the ram to see if it leaked through the connection between the barrel and the ram. Um, and once you kind of troubleshoot each of those spots, those are where the spots can leak, you have the plunger, the ram, or the barrel connection, and you're good to go. So we're going to see how this fires now. I've got a K26 in it. So here we go. Prime, slides open, close, perfect. So what happens is actually me adjusting the muzzle and me installing it in the plunger actually help align the brass breech. There's a little bit of friction up there. And so a really good brass breech, if it's nice and aligned and well polished, it'll slide in and you can even get it to drop and just lock in like that. Um, so here we have tools, we have a buffing wheel. You can use um, steel wool, scotch bright to polish up the brass. You can actually use brass soil, you can use micro adhesives and polishes to get your brass sliding smooth. And that is why I personally prefer not to use brass because there's no more maintenance and it does wear out over time. However, if you want top quality performance, that's what you would use. And the test air seal, plug with your finger and fire. Got a little bit of an air leak in there, but that's still pretty good. That's the K25, 18 inch barrel. And it hit about 240 FPS. Now that was just one shot. However, that's typically what you'd get. The problem though I just did, you probably just saw it, is I went to take out the magazine and I forgot it did not have a Vanguard or Ram core in it. So you, you have to make sure you open the breech like a normal blaster, insert the mag and then push it forward a load of darts because if you don't open the breech and you forget and you slam in a mag, you can bend your brass pretty bad and then there's another broken breech. But if you have the Vanguard, no worries there. 